It's no secret that I absolutely love to take the camera to and review an obscure watch brand or a watch that has design quirks or may perhaps be classified as somewhat weird. In fact, the more obscure and or the weirder the better for me. Today, I take a look at something that lives in the centre of the city of quirkiness, something that is dark, something that is gothic, something that looks like it belongs to the dark ages and something that is, for want of a better word, the weirdest watch I've ever ever reviewed. This is the Middle Ages Zero Two Anti Gold by Hong Kong based watch brand Axis and we take the macro lens to this purposely archaic looking watch as we try and examine every aspect of this watch as I always try to do. Oh and please do stick around to the end of the vid when I take the Middle Ages Zero Two Anti Gold to Bruges, possibly the most beautiful town here in Belgium and also known as the Venice of the North as we take this watch around the medieval streets of this stunning Belgian town. As ever, it's great to have you here. But before we do anything else, let's take a look at the spec of the Middle Ages, all in the next 90 seconds. Axis is a watch brand based in Hong Kong and claims to only focus on making the most value driven contemporary timepieces to complement the way you express yourself. And Axis boasts a few very quirky designs including the Bora Bora with its quirky strap and dial designs, the New York a simple slim but cool looking watch, the Aurora which features a dial made from real marble, the Axis X Hatital again featuring a dial made from real marble but with a titanium case, the classic a simple watch with like the rest I've just mentioned housing a Swiss made ETA quartz movement, the Ashoka a fantastic little watch featuring a beautiful interchangeable ceramic bezel and this was actually reviewed on my channel by my very good friend Sophie so please do take a moment to watch that and of course this the Middle Ages Zero Two. So as you can see some very interesting and very quirky designs by the guys at Axis and designs that actually do very well in the Far Eastern market where these watches sell like absolute hotcakes but with respect yet to really make an impression in Europe and the Americas. And this is the Middle Ages Zero Two Anti Gold um, which is part of a range that includes the Middle Ages Zero One Anti Gold, Middle Ages Zero One Anti Silver and the Middle Ages Zero Two Anti Silver. And just to reiterate what was said in a dark and eerie 90 second spec, this the Middle Ages Zero Two I measured came in at 14.1 millimeters thick, 38 millimeters in diameter, 50 millimeters lug to lug, 27 millimeters at the lug with this OEB plated brass bracelet tapering down to 18 millimeters at its clasp. And the case is made from OEB plated brass and don't forget that this watch is called the Middle Ages and the Middle Ages was actually a period of time in European history between the fall of the Roman Empire and the Renaissance period including the medieval period and is often referred to as the Dark Ages 
and medieval architecture in that era was dominated by Gothic designs, all of which are characterised by vertical proportions, pointed arches, asymmetry and external buttressing, which is an architectural structure built against or projecting from a wall which serves to support and reinforce the wall, very much common in medieval buildings. And this, the case of the Middle Ages Zero Two, as you can quite clearly see, is heavily influenced by the Gothic architecture of that Middle Ages era. There are those designs dominating the face of this watch from either side of the dial to these curved central lugs which for me really makes the overall design of this watch a little more aesthetically appealing. Heavy designs on the two thick central lugs above and below the dial and heavy designs on the thinner sides of that dial. And whilst it perhaps looks overdone on the front of this case, the sides boast their simplicity that really balances out any potential overcomplication. And now onto that dial. And I must say it's one of the most unique and dare I say one of the most stylish dials I have ever come across. It's almost unfathomable that it belongs to a watch. Um, but before I go on to the pattern, which for me is the star of the show, I'll just very quickly mention the hands. They are gold, gothic style hands, very very slender with proportionally a slightly more dominant needle like seconds hand. Now the style of these hands you'd probably find on an old Torsen pendulum clock, something that my nan and granddad actually used to own um, and look really really cool. In terms of indices you have 4 hour markers and nothing else at the 12, 3, 6 and 9 positions, battened, tapering down towards the centre of the dial, all of which have faceted relief to give extra depth. The Axis logo is in gold and quite dainty between the 12 and the pinion and the automatic status above the 6 and is set against a very plain black dial. Now in writing that all seems pretty boring, but what really makes this watch stand out for me is this green cross which isn't actually on the dial. It's actually lasered into the mineral crystal. It's a very stylish green cross pate or cross formi, which is the type of Christian cross with arms that are narrow at the centre and often flares into a curved shape that's broader at its perimeter. And this form of cross appears very early in medieval art. And that green cross which is set upon this black dial with its respective dainty gold hands, gold logo and gold indices reflects the light in a way I've never seen before on a watch dial. It really is, but well, what can I say, it really is a work of art and catches that light absolutely in a stunning, stunning way. And note that this is the Middle Ages Zero Two anti-gold, uh, the Middle Ages Zero Two anti-silver sports that same cross lasered onto the crystal but the Zero One, both anti-gold and anti-silver variants sport a different design, it being a fleur de lis which is French for flower lily and is a common heraldic charge in the shape of lily. The crown here at 3 o'clock is a push-pull crown, 6.3mm in diameter, coin edged and just to note that the Middle Ages Zero Two has a water resistance of only 3 atm or 30 meters, so the watch is protected from splashes such as rain, but if it were me I wouldn't immerse this in water. The bracelet is an OEB plated brass bracelet coming from the central lugs of this case, obviously cut out to accommodate those central lugs and sports one of two main design features. One, the gothic patterns here and two, the very unique large first link that sports these gothic patterns which taper down very quickly from 27mm in width at the central lug down to a touch under 18mm at the second link where it stays at that width by the time it reaches what initially appears to be a butterfly clasp but is actually a deployment clasp and is stealth under the small links of the bracelet and offers zero micro adjustment so expect this to have the same amount of adjustment as a butterfly clasp. The movement is an NH38 movement, 21,600 beats per hour which is fine given how small and dainty the hands are so therefore doesn't really feel so staggery, 24 joules, 41 hour power reserve, hacking seconds, no date and a true true no date without a phantom date crown position and actually one of my own personal favourite movements and one that is a true workhorse as we've all seen mainly in the microband world. And that movement is contained behind this exhibition case back. Again, as I reiterate in all my reviews, it's no secret that I'm a big, big fan of exhibition case backs, blah, 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 blah. And this one is screwed down by four small screws. Um, and well, the NH38, whilst one of my favorite movements in terms of reliability, isn't exactly the most attractive movement. So I kind of wish the rotor was stamped with either the Axis logo or even just some of those beautiful Gothic patterns that really are the signature of this watch. 
just to perhaps pimp up this exhibition case back a little. You do have small gothic patterns however etched into the silver in and around the perimeter of the case back. On my 7.5 inch wrist it wears, well what can I say, in terms of comfortability it wears really really well in fact. This bracelet has the same micro adjustment capabilities of a butterfly clasp and as you know it's the look of the drawers to whether or not the sizing will fit too loose, too tight or just perfectly and this luckily enough fits perfectly I must say. I won't lie, when I first pulled this out of the box after the awesome guys I accessed kindly sent this to me, my immediate reaction was to think wow this is ultra weird and probably not something I'd wear. Then I put it on and actually I thought it wasn't too bad. On a recent trip to Lille in France I was in a bakery, the famous Maison Papillon on Rue Nationale and a lady there actually stopped me to compliment the watch. Now I wear micros, independent watch brands and the odd dare I say fashion brand and all sorts across my wrist every single day and this is the first time a stranger has ever complimented a watch I was wearing so I was actually pretty chuffed about that. So back to when I first saw it out of the box, my initial personal opinion was that the gothic designs could be toned down ever so slightly but now I think well this watch is pretty much all or nothing in that respect. Uh, the lasered pattern on the crystal is just awesome and I mean truly truly awesome. Now I went round the town of Bruges here in Belgium wearing shorts and a short sleeve tee and I must admit I wasn't embarrassed to wear it nor self conscious about wearing what some may describe as an over extravagant watch and I really really enjoyed how it looked on my wrist. I actually have really quite taken to it. In terms of price the middle ages 02 is priced at 1980 Hong Kong dollars which is a touch over 200 UK pounds sterling, 250 USD or 235 euros in today's market, well within that punt range if this is something that you're on the fence about and representing great value for money if it's something that you like, bearing in mind the NH38 movement, high spec brass case and bracelet and of course that unique lasered pattern on the crystal. Overall, I mean I love micro brands and small independent and boutique watch brands because I love how creative they can be sometimes and I've been fortunate to have seen some absolute dare I say oddities and quirky pieces come my way. From the Cal watch multiverse and its fantastic moon dial, hands and this superb loom to the Yes World Watch V7 that allows you to tell times for sunrise and sunset, zenith, true midnight and twilight not to mention its beautiful rose gold case that speaks volumes on your wrist and the sensational number cruncher by Mr Jones's watches that showcases a marvellous monster who plucks the hours from the sky while the minutes churn around in its stomach. And this the middle ages 02 anti gold which is without a doubt the weirdest, wonderfully weirdest might I add um, and the most quirkiest of them all. I appreciate that it will be hit and miss for many, probably mainly miss in the mainstream demographic of the general watch living community in Europe and the Americas but I'm hoping that there are enough out there who will find this design very appealing, who will find the price very appealing and who will find certain elements of this watch such as the marvellous crystal and its laser design very very tempting. For me it's staying in my watch box and I will wear it for days when I feel creative and for days when I want to feel wonderfully weird myself.
Ik wil straks nog het embleem van de Pelikaan, dus juist boven de ingangsdeur zit, uitstateerd in 1634. Troisième maison, votre vrac, et la maison Dieu, le Pelikaan. Jong, bij Mille. Hier de binnenstad, Brugge, het oude stadsgedeelte. Veldse 21 kerken. Dit is voor vervolging in 1821. We hebben still four days a week. Een very small fish market. Oude Gijden, Vetterschuis, de oude Leerlooierij, Perende in 1630. Yards, shop right. Yes, it was up in the corner. 